Hi, I'm Carrie and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I thought I'd go ahead and talk about another divination system that is my absolute favorite. I mean, it ranks right up there with the cards and that's charm casting. I was just introduced to charm casting a year, maybe a year and a half ago. I was watching um, Emerald Lotus Divinations channel and um, Kelly over at The Truth and Story, her channels um, about how they use charms. And I just I was so fascinated by it. I mean, I, I dove right in. There was no tiptoeing in the water or anything. I mean, I just dove straight in. Yes, I'm going to do this. I already had a lot of charms um, on hand. And then I went on a, um, a little mini buying spree of picking up charms from the local craft stores, especially when they were running their 40, 50, 60% off sales on the, the charms. And when you get like six little charms to um, a piece of cardboard, you know, then you can really um, add to your collection. And my collection is huge. These are my spares. Um, and these are the ones in here that I work with. And sorry for the, the clinging of the charms or whatever, but there, there are a lot of charms. Um, I thought I would go ahead and show you some of them from my collection and maybe what they mean to me. And then I would be curious for you um, to know if you, I guess I should say, also cast charms and if you have any videos on it, I'd love to check those out. So don't forget to leave me a comment below. So anyway, this is my huge amount of charms. I do not throw these all out at one time. I usually keep these in my singing bowl, but I moved them to that little pouch so it wouldn't be so loud on camera. But I usually keep these in my singing bowl and then I'll just hold my singing bowl, close my eyes in, pick out um, just a few like this and then drop them and see where they land. I have um, created my own little, um, I guess, charm casting board from like a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And I have also, um, I also recently like to use them with tarot. Uh, I put a cup, the tarot reading down, then I, at the end, pick my charms and um, throw them to see where they go. I really enjoyed um, Danny at Danny Mystic's channel where she talked about her charm casting and she picks out certain charms that mean certain things and then casts them over top of the cards to see, you know, where that significant, um, significant energy lands. So if this interests you um, to see how I cast them on my cards, also let me know that in the comments and maybe I can make a video about that. Or I know Emerald Lotus Divination, I think in her Etsy shop or maybe it's on her website, she sells um, charm casting cloths um, that you can purchase also. So these are just a few that I picked out in this little book here, I wrote down what my charms are and how, um, what I felt the energy of them were. So the little bird cage here, feeling trapped. This gives me um, like eight of swords vibes, feeling caged in. This camera's a memory or just a snapshot where you, you maybe you can't see the whole picture because it's just a small, snapshot. The sun relates to the sun card in the um, tarot. Same thing, whoops, same thing with the moon. Relates to the moon card in the tarot. And with the sun and the moon, you can relate it to daytime, nighttime, if you wanted to, as far as like timing goes. 
Um, the ship, I kind of reference the Lenormand um, ship card, depending on, um, it could be travel or, um, I have another image for travel though, but this could be uh, something coming in or flowing out, depending on which way that it's going. Um, the cactus is a prickly endeavor where it's not going to be comfortable for you, but it's not going to, you know, kill you either. It might hurt a little bit, sting a little bit, but um, it'll all work out. The sunglasses could either mean relax and have fun, um, or it could mean you're not seeing things clearly or you're, you know, things are shaded. Let's see what else. Um, this is my actual travel charm. Um, so if this comes out, then you're going somewhere. Key is obvious. You're unlocking something. This is a representation of um, a boy or man. Butterfly is change, of course. Um, this is specifically to represent my son, but then I have some word charms and I have several of these that I got. Um, these are actually, I think, Tim Holtz um, charms that you can get at any craft store, Amazon, wherever. Oh, here's some more. Reflect. So they mean what they what they say. And there's another one. So I have several of the um, word charms. This is a life preserver, so you know you're needing help. The snail is um, like things are moving slow for me. The book is your knowledge. The witch's hat is magic. Um, there's another word charm, word. This says follow your path. Then we have the little frog couple. So this is a coupled energy. The bee is a worker, you know, busy as a bee. This, the reason I held this out was because I couldn't remember if I changed this out with a different one, but I guess not. This represents the home. Um, this is your direction. And this is um, strength. Um, feeling anchored. Then I have Buddha here for um, peace, tranquility, your mask, what's being hidden behind the mask, clock for time. Um, the luggage where you could, you know, if you wanted to, you could make it travel. But I chose to uh, make it where you are packing. You have things that are packed up. You need to unpack um, something in this situation. Then we have our little door. And this, the only thing I don't like about this one is it has this magnet in it. So things tend to stick to it. Like... Um, the lock where things are locked away. This is a, um, this is for winter, represents winter. The little feet could mean um, a path or a baby. Octopus, you've got your hands involved in too many things. Um, this money represents a larger amount of money to me. And the penny represents a small amount of money. Or this is, you know, look at your finances. A gift, the girl, um, the owl is wisdom, the crystal ball is intuition. This represents, the ice cream cone represents summer. I use this as like a pointer if I need a direction Infinity, things need mending. Uh, let's see. 
There's skeletons in your closet. Um, this one represents the death card. Healing. Um, <clears throat> this represents the same thing as the clouds do in a Lenormand deck for me. <clears throat> Another word. Good luck with the clover. Um, here's tarot. This represents the um, cutting away. Things need cleaned up with the broom. Uh, the wrench, things need worked on. The star represents the star card in the tarot. Now the heart lock is this would deal, um, this has a lock as far as relationships go. So this is um, specifically in regards to that, where the other lock is in general. The bone represents like the dog um, in the Lenormand, so friend, loyalty. This is a message. Um, this could be intuition. This is squirreling away. Um, this is your divine helpers, however you see it. The cross rep represents the same thing for me, like the Lenormand. Um, this represents fall. Um, the spider represents what kind of web you're weaving. Are you tangled in a web? Then I have, I'm looking for the other ones. Oh, my little um, Eiffel Tower um, represents the tower card. Then I have my different hearts. And each one um, represents like a different thing in a relationship. Um, so the double hearts together are um, feeling con um, as one or um, a relationship that is just starting and you're, you know, coming together. Um, the little gold heart is a representation of the man in the relationship. The little ornate heart is like a female for me. And the winged heart is one that is not going to, it's not going to necessarily last. Or your heart's not into it um, because it could take, it has wings and it could take off at any time. So this isn't necessarily just relationships. It could be as maybe your heart's not in the situation, uh, whatever that may be. So that's what that one is. The ring is obviously commitment. Um, this is springtime. Uh, the mirror is reflection. The grapes are abundance. Family for the tree. The comb. Coming through the details, the little hand is like, what do you have your hand in? Um, the crown, I kind of see this one as being, um, I don't want to say royalty, but maybe you're being a diva. <laughs> or it could be the exact opposite where you're going to get recognized for something. So I see this kind of two ways. This is just going in circles. Um, this is growing or blossoming. Now the clover, where I said that was luck, um, and the wishbone is the make a wish for me, you know, where you hold each side of the and wishbone and pull and see, you know, if you get the larger piece, then your wish comes true. So the haunted house for me is telling me, it could mean a house is actually haunted, but it's saying, um, I use it where there are things that 
um, in a relationship that aren't necessarily, um, things aren't going well. I'll put it that way. Things aren't going well in a relationship. There's too many things from your past that, or, or even any um, scenario, there's too many things from your past that are haunting you and coming in and creating a disturbance whatever the situation is. And the globe, I don't, I guess the globe I use is the world, to represent the world card, like the completion. Um, and these ones I don't really use anymore. So that is all my, I'm gonna say, working charms. Um, these are the ones that, like I said, that stay in my singing bowl all the time and that I will pull from and throw across any tarot cards um, or use a casting cloth or mat or whatever um, that I want to do for a reading. So if that interests you, like I had stated earlier, please let me know in the comments and I will do some charm casting um, and show you how I read with my charms. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, everything like that grows my channel here. And until next time, bye.